All right, so we're back. Um, literally just now back. I was in Orlando, Florida for Amanda Serrano making history 12 rounds, three minutes per round. I dropped down in Orange County and all of a sudden Francis Ngannou wants to shock the entire fucking world. And by the way, in Francis's first ever boxing match, this fight was supposed to be easy. It was supposed to be a lesson in the sweet science for Francis Ngannou. Just another MMA fighter versus a boxer and Francis Ngannou one more time showed people like me and all of you that he didn't give two shits about none of that. Instead, he just shook up the entire sport of boxing. What the hell just happened? Francis Ngannou, Tyson Fury, the breakdown. Let's go. So I'm just gonna go straight away and let you guys know I got this one completely fucking wrong. This was supposed to be a circus, an exhibition of sorts that was made pro and actually licensed to be a pro fight. I think as late as today before the fight. But it was supposed to be a cash grab, a way for Tyson to get in camp for his next big fight in December versus Alexander Usyk and Francis Ngannou, the guy that I said and everyone said was just a little bit in over his head here. He's a power puncher. He's not the greatest technically, not going to be able to hang with the skill of the 6'9 phenom Tyson Fury. But as Francis Ngannou echoed from his mentor, Mike Tyson, everyone has a plan and everyone has the answers until you get punched in the face. So let's just go through the fight. Round one, it starts out with Tyson doing what he said he was going to try to do to Francis Ngannou, bully him, come forward, land big shots, and impose his will on the non-boxer. Again, I'm gonna restate this many times, Francis had never boxed, ever, as a professional. This was his debut. There was a reason the WBC belt wasn't on the line. It's because they did not believe this to be a competitive match in any way, shape, or form, or that Tyson would have any struggles with his opponent. So why put the belt up? Because it's not supposed to be competitive. Which is hilarious because the complete 180 happens with some different judging. Francis might be walking around Mr. Two Belts with the lineal and the WBC, but... I'm gonna let y'all hold that for a sec. Because round one, like I said, Tyson did what he said he wanted to do. But, but I think this, even in this first round, is where Tyson starts to understand Francis is not like someone he's ever seen. And fair play to Tyson. He said this before the fight that Francis was probably going to be one of his toughest opponents because he's a bit unorthodox and because they don't have a lot of strict boxing footage on him. And let's be honest, heavyweight's never been known for its high level skill, but this is still the highest level of heavyweight boxing versus a guy making his debut. Ipso facto would be the lowest level of heavyweight boxing. I know I'm generalizing there, but you get what I mean. Tyson shouldn't have had to worry anything about Francis' level, but in that first round, he found out that not only was Francis big, he was strong. Let's not forget, he weighed in at 272 pounds. Usually, we don't even see Francis that big in the UFC because of their weight limit at 265. Tyson weighed in at 277. I said this in one of my videos leading up. Would this be the biggest and, and potentially strongest guy that Tyson had ever been in the ring with, I think that was confirmed in this first round because Tyson was trying to implement a style in which he would throw shots, fall in behind, and put his weight on Francis like he had with Deontay Wilder and found out he could bully guys like he had with Chisora, like he did with White. This was a different guy in Francis. And he was better in maneuvering the clinch than Tyson even was in this fight. But Tyson does, like I said, what Tyson does in round one, wins that round, but then in round two, this was the moment you started to go, oh, this is not just a Tyson Fury ramping up pressure, going to get Francis out of there, going to do what he wants. We're in a fucking fight. Francis starts stifling Tyson a bit with his lead hook that's giving Tyson some problems. He's seeing it, but he's not able to get out of the way of it because guess what? Yes, while he's 6'9", Francis didn't have that much of a reach disadvantage, even at 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 and still, you see some of the flaws in Tyson's game. Even when he's the sitting heavyweight champion, he does linger in the pocket. He does drop his hands on the exit. And quite frankly, Francis was quick enough, skilled enough, and confident enough to catch him multiple times doing this. There's a moment in this round two where Tyson Again, is trying to fall in with his jab and clinch Francis, but leading with his head. There's a bit of a clash of heads, and Francis even lands an uppercut and cuts Tyson above the brow, showing Tyson right then and there, oh, buddy, you're not just going to put your weight on me, and, and I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to be able to push you around just as much. Tyson has bullied a lot of guys in the last two to three to four years. Tonight, Francis showed him that where Francis is from, the bullies get bullied. Round two is a crucial one, too, because this round can end up being the swing round, the round that if you do want to score it for Francis, you can see him winning round two. If you want to score it for Tyson, you can see him winning round two. I think they land the same amount of punches. I think Francis throws a little more. And again, that ring generalship, it didn't really favor one guy or another. I think both guys were pushing pace, both guys fainting, both guys throwing. And again, it matters a lot because then we get to round three. And this is when Francis Ngannou made the earth 
shake. We talked about the possibility of Francis landing one shot that could put Tyson Fury down. And you and almost do it out of respect for Francis. Like, listen, he has the power to put anyone down. It's heavyweight boxing. Anything can happen. But at least me, you don't know if you really believe it's possible. Because again, this isn't Deontay Wilder with 30 fights under his belt as a pro. This isn't a seasoned veteran that had amateur fights. It is and quite frankly a novice, a newbie to the sport of boxing. Someone that's never trained it consistently, never participated in it as a pro, and all were in our minds relying on it as big time power. But that is where Francis is different. He wasn't just big time power tonight. He was speed, he was timing, he was technique, he was unorthodox, sure. But he was also beating Tyson Fury at his own game, in the pocket, close, and staying defensive to transition to offense. He was eating whatever Tyson was throwing and staying in that pocket, being able to take shots from the heavyweight champ who said he was the biggest puncher, and we knew that wasn't true, and also keeping his guard a little bit tighter so that when he wanted to go defense, transition back to offense like he does in this round with the left hook over the top as Tyson walks in and tries to bang a right hand down the pipe and really sit down on his power like he's done in the last few fights, Francis was not only able to make him miss the right hand, but comes over the top of the left hook of his own. And quite frankly, this wasn't even the best thrown left hook that Francis could have put on him, but the sheer power, location of the shot, the reaction time to throw it and land it all come together and down goes Tyson Fury. Myself and Face Sensei were going bananas on live stream. Twitter erupted. The entire crowd in Saudi erupted. I'm talking boxing legends. Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Larry Holmes, Oscar De La Hoya, fucking Kanye West, Eminem, Conor McGregor himself, mate. Everyone in the crowd. But the two people's reaction that everyone should have been paying attention to were the two men in the ring. Tyson Fury on his back accepting what has just happened and this was not as easy as just another MMA fighter and maybe, just like the old adage from Uncle Chael that I always use with you guys, this fight had become harder than he even prepared for it. And on the other side, the absolute Kodak moment, the click, click, the cameras go off, there's a still shot of it, Tyson's on the ground, Francis is standing over him, but in the video, Francis is dancing on the heavyweight champion after he's knocked him down. Are you fucking kidding me? That shit right there sends goosebumps down my arms to think a guy in his first boxing match never done it. Yes, he's the MMA champion of the world. Yes, he trains in somewhat of a discipline in striking, but nothing that is strictly boxing. No reason he should be in this fight. No reason he should be competitive. He's knocking down the Leon WBC heavyweight champion and styling on him as he does it, walking around, not even caring to get back to his corner. Put that shit right there in a museum. That is a moment no one will ever forget. That right there, whether we want to talk about Francis actually winning the fight, which is something them we're gonna get to or not that moment right there won francis the night won him the fight made all of the people including myself that said he could not compete in this fight it was not going to go his way look like a bunch of idiots put the sport of boxing in the fucking mud because here is your face here is the man that is the baddest on the planet in your sport getting tooled up by the actual baddest on the planet. Complete insanity. Francis wins this round. It's obviously a 10-8 round. And when we go to round four, Francis still has that confidence. Francis is still throwing and moving forward now, taking control of the center of the ring on Tyson Fury. I thought he won this round as well. And it was again, watching Tyson Fury look completely out of his element in this round, in this fight. Watching him faint and then throw like a double hand reach and try to clinch and not engage. He understood the shot he got hit with in round three was the biggest indicator. Okay, I can't exchange with this guy. I can't sit down on shots because if I try, he might put my fucking lights out and make this even worse than it already is now. I think it's in round four. It might be in round five. There's a moment where Tyson Fury actually, I thought on first watch, landed a right hand. On replay, it showed an elbow and I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know intent behind shots and if something's done on purpose illegally or not. I'm, I don't know that, right? I can't, I'm not in the mind of Tyson Fury, but when I watch that elbow on replay, I'm gonna tell you something. The angle in which his arm switches from punch to elbow is not a natural one for any overhand right that I've seen. It wasn't like he KSI'd this thing and I know people are gonna go, oh, okay, wait, hating on KSI. It's not even the case. I'm actually giving KSI a compliment here. The way he landed an elbow on Joe Fournier for my influencer boxing people, he threw a right hand, a short right hand that just whizzed by the chin of Joe Fournier and happened to catch on the elbow as he turned that shot over. The problem here was Tyson Fury looked like he started to throw a right hand, changed the angle, then came down with the elbow, and that 
looked a little suspicious. You want to know the even more goaded part of that exchange is that Francis Ngannou takes that shit eats that elbow like it's a fucking grand slam breakfast at Denny's and shows absolutely no reaction to it. Just walked right through it. Fucking open meadow on a brisk fall afternoon. That was easy work. You want to know why? Because that individual is trained in multiple combat sports. An elbow? Yeah, I'm sure it hurt him. But he eats shin bones off the chin, mate. It's different out here. So again, Francis... Walking through literally everything Tyson Fury threw at him, there was not many reactions to what Tyson was doing. And sure, Tyson was still getting off his jab. And sure, he was still landing some shots here and there, but in the fourth round, I thought Francis won that one as well. Five and six, in my opinion, go to Tyson Fury. And again, it was more stagnation from both guys at this point. It felt like the fight really slowed down after that fourth round. Like This could have been because Tyson didn't want to take a risk, or maybe he was... A little bit tired, which it looked like as these rounds went on, he was getting gassed very quickly. And for Francis, it could have been the fact that Tyson did start to figure out a bit of what Francis was trying to do. But like I said, rounds five and six, I think Tyson Fury wins purely off his jab and a bit more volume, I think, in, in one of those rounds than Francis had. But again, relatively close rounds. These aren't rounds where Tyson is just putting crazy volume on Francis and just outskilling him cleanly every single exchange. That's not the case. Like, Tyson is skimming by round again we have to keep saying it against francis and ganu who's never boxed what the fuck are we talking about this was not what was scripted this is not how boxing is supposed to be laid out we've seen this happen before with the jake pauls and some of the other crossovers mma fighters aren't supposed to be able to box with boxers sure they can fight they're tough they'll be there for it but they're not supposed to be able to box with them, let alone knock them down or even win exchanges. Like, in my opinion, Francis does in multiple rounds. Again, I'm going off the top of my head here, but as we get to round seven, that felt like another toss-up round to me. It was like, again, it was a lot of nothing happening, right? Like Tyson on his jab and Francis on his power punches. Again, the lead hook, the right hands going out of southpaw, the straight left hand of the body, the straight left hand upstairs. There was a lot of congruent consistency with what both guys wanted to do. And again, Tyson's game plan throughout this fight, you could start to see was not working out well for him. It was clear he wanted to put pressure on Francis early, start to try to hit him with big time shots that he could sit down on and commit to. That went out the fucking window after round three and he got put on his ass. And after that happened, it was more so let me work my jab, let me clinch when he's close and stay away from that fucking massive power. And hopefully me putting my weight on him will start to gas him and it looked like that opposite was happening and that Tyson was the one getting gassed and getting gashed he was getting hit with big shots while he was jabbing Francis he was eating damage and that looked like the biggest factor in the fight that Tyson could never get a game plan established it was Francis interrupting everything Tyson wanted to do and not just that not just fighting in the negatives but then implementing what he wanted to do him going first like we see in the eighth round where Francis starts throwing fucking combinations and again I think Francis wins this round. I think he wins round number eight, which at least gives him three rounds, in my opinion, in the book. You could even say four rounds if you're giving him seven, which is a round where he landed even but threw more. And again, round two is this close. I'm talking razor thin. If you want to give him round two, Francis now has five rounds banked as we head into round nine and ten with a 10-8 round in round three and again i want to preface this by saying i've only watched the fight one time so i could be misremembering a bit here or it could be a little closer in some rounds or maybe not as much as i'm saying but we're gonna go back and look at it in far far more detail over on the breakdown me and sensei probably tomorrow as of this video dropping or maybe the next day i'm not sure but we're gonna go into a deeper dive there we'll get it really sorted out for you but rounds nine and ten were again a lot of nothing i think this was where tyson was reserved to just getting through the fight and Maybe in his mind, he was winning these rounds off his jab, which again, not just in his mind, was the actual decision. Tyson, I split. And this is the only part where I would, I'm not critical of, of Francis because how can you be? This is an immaculate performance, amazing. Like there's almost nothing else that Francis could have done except maybe put a little more output out in these rounds because this is where Tyson comes back and makes this a bit of a debatable decision. He wins round nine and 10, in my opinion. Again, 10 being super close. Maybe you could say Francis pulled that one out, but I don't know. Again, there wasn't a ton of damage from either guy here. But again, look at how we're talking about Tyson Fury. The fighting Fury man, the lineal in WBC heavyweight champion from John Fury's Walter. Winning rounds by very thin margins to the point where we're debating if he even won rounds and if he even won this fight. This shit should not happen. So then we get to the judges' scorecard. And this one you knew was going to be controversial 
because boxing is a very controversial judging sport where a lot of decisions are head scratchers and you just you don't know why because we've talked about it at nauseam it feels like for the last couple weeks i'm kind of tired of it but we have to readdress it boxing judging is so damn subjective and even in this case another close one but i could understand if you saw fury winning this fight i guess off of his jab and maybe controlling distance in certain instances but in this fight there was a clear separator of damage and that man was Francis Ngannou who on multiple occasions almost separated Tyson Fury from his senses and the way I scored it was this and again I don't think that everyone's gonna agree with me and maybe on second watch I'll change my mind but I thought Francis won the second round I thought he won the third round I thought he won the fourth round I thought he won the seventh and the eighth which would give Tyson one five six nine and ten a five five split with the 10 eight going to francis in round three making this a 95 to 94 win for francis and I, I thought he won this fight and again i'm not ready to sit here and scream robbery from the fucking hilltops because again round two is a swing round Round seven could be a swing round. There's a lot there that can go either way. So I don't mind a 95, 94 either way because what the fuck? What are we talking about? 95, 94 to the heavyweight champ and the guy that's never done it. This is why Francis won the night regardless. In this specific instance, Francis Ngannou proved he wasn't just an MMA fighter. He is a fighter through circumstance, through adversity, through doubt. So what does this all mean? Well, let's start with Francis. For one, Francis is now at the head of the table. He is calling the shots. Now, I don't know what his PFL contract looks like and how many times he has to fight PFL, then go to boxing and back and forth. But I heard Francis's coach after the fight say that the WBC president was planning on ranking Francis in the top 10, as he should be after that fight. So all of a sudden, the fights that were far and away not going to happen for Francis, like the Fury fight at one point, the guys like Wilder, Joshua, Chisora, White, whoever are on the table and Francis could potentially work his way up in the heavyweight scene. Like right now, I'm not going to sit here and be like, Francis beats this guy, beats that guy because styles do make fights, but he's shown he's competitive with the best in the world. Unprecedented stuff. I can't even fuck. I can't even believe it's coming out of my, I can't, how, like, what am I saying? And again, for Francis's legacy, for what he wants to be able to be recognized, that's amazing. But it's also, let's be honest, a business. And Francis just quadrupled his value to boxing and to MMA. This dude is about to get paid from the Fury fight. But in his next one, he's about to get paid, son. But as far as the actual boxing side of this, there's a couple of red flags here. One is the fact that Francis did what he just did. It's a terrible look for boxing. One, because your heavyweight champ couldn't get over on a guy that never boxed. And two, Tyson was supposed to fight Alexander Usyk in December. That shit, I can almost guarantee you, is not happening now. Like, Usyk's face when Tyson fell to the canvas wasn't the face of a man that was... I mean, maybe he was surprised, but it was also the face of a man that knew he was not about to get that Tyson Fury fight. At least not in December. They're probably going to have to push this thing back to March and April. But quite frankly, I would rather see a Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury rematch. To be honest with you, I'm sorry. I just Why do I care now about Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk? I want to see that rematch. I know it's not going to happen, but it's just what I feel would be right. And on top of that, you have guys now like Anthony Joshua and... Wilder and, and all these other guys that while yes Wilder lost to Fury now I bet they're licking their chops being like oh my goodness the champ is vulnerable Usyk sitting there the matchups at chaos that could go on a heavyweight yeah potentially is a good thing but tonight on this night boxing as a sport led by Tyson Fury whether you want to believe it this way or not got exposed a bit here six months of training was all it took for Francis to do what he did I just want to give homage and appreciation one to Tyson Fury for taking this fight it was a dangerous fight he took it fair play to him and again on the judges scorecards he wins it but in my eyes many others and I think the right decision Francis Ngannou just beat Tyson Fury whether you want to call it a moral victory or again the way I see it an actual victory he changed combat sports today history was made and it was all because one man believed when no one else did and myself included so the lesson here is dare to dream and dare to break barriers. Francis Ngannou did that and some. He just shook up the world. That is what just happened. But as for what goes on next for Francis, for Tyson, for boxing, I don't have those answers. But I guess we'll find out.